into this record and that's how also listening to a lot of electronica at the moment the gold frap and the lady tron and uh the or, uh, underground artists like la tigre came about i recorded all of the music from home i had all the amazing artists that supplied their talents to this record come to the red lips room which i had named my studio taken over um from ozzy osbourne which used to be the whole osbourne house that they filmed the show in and everything but he had an incredible studio set up in the back that um, I knew was a big selling point for me. I can just throw on my flip-flops and my sweatpants and go back there and uh, create, which is fantastic. This album is, is different. I think it's uh, obvious when you see the cover, uh, the fact that it really goes in a more futuristic direction. When you listen to the music, you know, it's hard to pick you'll see with all the single releases everything has a different flavor and a different feel. You can't sort of um, you can't sort of define the album within one song. It's very versatile and it goes through its whole journey of a storyline and uh, and uh, fun moments and vulnerable moments. And much like my stripped record, it reminds me of, you know, emotionally a lot of the places that I go, but in a very, you know, recovered and uh, peaceful, fun place, you know, being inspired to play more too from my son, being more in touch and comfortable with my initial pop roots um, from 10 years ago, Genie in a Bottle days, you know, to sort of tap into that, but in a much more sophisticated and mature manner. Um, I've sort of taken elements of each and every record, previous record, and put it all into Bionic, um, coming full circle, and, uh, you know, the, the thread through the artwork and everything for Bionic is very strong and graphic, um, experimenting with a lot of um, strong blacks and uh, metals and stones and uh, uh, whites and reds accents. Not Myself Tonight came about uh, at the very end for me of filming the movie, uh, Burlesque, which I had to, I was actually finished with my record and I had to put it on hold to go film the movie uh, for about six months, which was, you know, musically, creatively, very difficult for me to do as an artist um, and then become this other person for six months. Um, so that was difficult for me at, at, at that time. Um, and I had changed and grown and learned so much during the, the, the movie that by the time I was about a month into rapping, I reached out to producers and the label and said, you know, send me tracks, send me songs, I have new stories to tell, I want to write, I'm interested in possibly getting back in the studio and seeing what transpires just because I'm, I'm freshly inspired and I have new things to say. And feeling a little not myself over the past, you know, six months because I literally had to be someone else, I was ready to sort of break out of my, my, my skin and my cage and, and uh, rebel a little bit um, against uh, having to be a certain way, per se. Uh, so almost in a, in a way it tapped into referencing my, my dirty days in a way, but much more sophisticated and in a mature manner. Strong, sexy, fun, playful. Is there a specific song on the record that holds special meaning to you? Um, you know, all the records are, are coinciding with particular moods that I have at different times of the day and week and month. <laughs> but uh, I would say, and I always say this, the heart of the record, the true, vulnerable, raw side of me is seen on the Sia and Sam Dixon records. Um, I wrote a song that sort of has a lullaby feel to it for my son. Um, very beautiful, simple, uh, simply produced piano ballad uh, called All I Need with these beautiful uh, strings that were attached to it. Um, three other songs uh, that I wrote with her uh, really spoke spoke true and honestly and from the heart so that's why I call it the heart of the record but you know nothing really electronically driven was put onto these records it's really raw and organic and and um, sweet and simple and, and beautiful I mean Sia and Sam were genius I'm super, super excited to get back on the road again and go see all of my fans up close and personal, um, touring the world, getting newly inspired for whatever the next look and uh, feeling and creation will come about and, 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 and become in the middle of touring. But so excited to promote Bionic and um, explore that whole world because it will be an entirely different 
uh, monster out on tour and uh, a totally different uh, side of myself that's never been seen before, using a lot of uh, special effects and electronic things, um, elements. So it's very exciting for me to explore the whole bionic elements and, and world. World Tour starting in July starts in uh, the U.S., then we go to Europe, and then wrapping up in Asia, Australia territories. Fans are amazing everywhere. Everyone has their own style, for sure, and uh, way of reacting. Um, but the loudest, probably, that it gets sometimes on tour. I don't know, Dublin's pretty great as far as volume and, and really getting into it. They were amazing. Australia has some hardcore amazing fans. Um, the UK has some pretty great uh, energy whenever I get on stage there. But, I mean, the list is endless. I mean, G Germany, e e everywhere has uh, amazing energy. It's very different. And it's, and it's interesting to tap into what that means to me as I perform as an artist. So they're all fun everywhere. Bring something new to the table.